All right, we're in the subterranean depths of the Saskatoon Center right here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Sitting here with Remington and Sebastian. Yeah. And then Emerson's a couple feet away. From Emerson us. a few yeah. feet away, just chilling. He's, he's, he's here in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> he's rocking the French over there too, just doing this thing, yeah. And of course I'm Jack, and this is uh, Do You Know Jack, the podcast. How are you doing? We're doing good, yeah. Um, just finished the show, feeling, feeling good. Not quite drunk yet, but we're getting there. <laughs> Yeah, how are you doing? I'm fine. I'm tired. <laughs> it's, it's it's weird. It's like it's a summer tour and all of a sudden you wake up and it's still cold outside. You're like, what the fuck is this going on right now? What do you mean it's cold I outside? I walked out of the bus and it was like nippy. It was a little for, chilly. For Saskatoon, this is nice and warm, I'm right? This would be warm weather. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's been weird. Like I, I was living in northern Canada a year ago where, you know, it'll get really cold. It'll yeah, be like yeah. five degrees. Yeah, you guys are you guys have got Canadian background yeah. I think somewhere yeah. along the way you know your Canadian geography yeah, so of course yeah yeah and I mean that's that's cool this isn't too bad yeah but, uh, I mean you know all, all this aside though you guys just put on a killer show holy shit oh thank you yeah um we just like going out there and just fucking shit up <laughs> <laughs> well and and you open with I want to be your dog the stooges yeah. I mean are you guys sort of you know big closeted stooge fans we, straight oh, up stooge no. fans we are sure. not stooges closeted are at all we love the stooges yeah we love yeah, anything we, Iggy Pop stones, yeah like the small faces the you know the doors anything from the 60s 70s era that was what like kind of mainly inspired the band in the beginning stages so we always have a place for our hearts for that kind of music so <laughs> Yeah, and it's also it's something that's been honest and true rock and roll that's been lost. Through and I think years. "Wanna Be Your Dog" is one of like one of the greatest rock songs ever written. So, yeah, it was just awesome doing it. Yeah, yeah. Well, now listen, you, you guys are kind of getting ready to turn the page on the Boom Boom Room stuff, though, right? Yes. I mean, you're sort of unveiling a bit of a different sound in a different direction. Uh, I mean, yeah. I think this sound has grown with us. that first record, the Saturday and Side Beef Boom Room was wrote before we even started touring, and now we're like 700 shows later, and four years of being on the road, going through being homeless, sleeping in a car, stealing food from grocery stores. Like, we've done it. We've we've lived life more than most people have just chasing our dreams in the first part so this next record is really a step in writing about what that was for us so the world has seen us as the live band we are but they haven't heard us as the live band we are on a recording just yet so it'll be nice to put out this record and you know kind of put our foot in that door of showing the band we've been for the past four years so yeah yeah well i mean i guess sonically then you know i mean i can hear a bit of a, a pivot i mean you guys still sound like the boom boom room stuff but i mean yeah. i mean how would you characterize well, I, I think the boom room stuff is our identity from day one we're not trying to escape it but we've also got a lot better as being a live band and knowing what we like and what works for a, a live atmosphere and yeah, you get mean. caught into this position that you kind of do stuff that it's We've played shows, we re revised a lot of our music, and I think revising a lot of our music has led to like just realizing what works for an audience, but you also want to capture a song that's timeless on recordings, and sometimes you have to take away the angst, but you want to keep that in there, so it's, you know, it's, a, it's a back and forth battle with yourself of creating something that works for a live atmosphere, but also on a recording, so. Yeah, well, then I was thinking now, Remington, I mean, of course, you know, you're getting a, you know, a front row seat, seeing guys like Manson and Zombie and I think recently you guys were on tour with Hailstorm am I yeah, right? Yeah. I, I mean like you guys you know this isn't your first rodeo right? You've been doing this for seven or seven or eight years now um, so I mean Yeah I feel like the band really has been a thing for four years of touring and so we it's been four years of on the road and I think we've I think it really started we started witnessing people when we were on tour with uh, Corey Taylor from Stone Sour and Slipknot and that was like one of the first people we saw and witnessed and was like wow that's how a performer is you know and then watching yeah. Zombie and Looks like a and shark about to like devour a human being in the water. Corey Taylor is just like one of the greatest performers and he's got this look in his eye that says he's about to kill you but put on the greatest rock show at all times. Yeah. So if Corey Taylor's a shark, then you know what is what is Remington? A little fucking piranha. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're all piranhas collectively, right? I mean, you know, yeah. you got the whole. Yeah. <laughs> See, Corey Taylor is like the slow moving, like yeah, yeah, yeah. like a lion. Yeah. Kind of shark. But when he like jumps shark. out of the water, like Shark Week, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> See, once the piranha week comes out, it'll all be good. 
Well, now you you know my wife was in the photo pit. You just about clotheslined her with your uh, mic cord there. Yeah. Oh my god. I looked. I looked back and I just saw like like eight security guards being strangled by my mic cord. I'm like, oh fuck. I'm like, here comes the lawsuit. <laughs> I'm glad you're okay. I hope the whiskey makes up for it. <laughs> the whiskey more than makes up for it. Well, now, what have you learned from guys like Corey Taylor and Marilyn Manson and Rob Zombie uh, Remington? Um, honestly, just those guys are so good at just entertaining a crowd, you know? Because, you know, all the fans in the room, they have the album, and they're not, they're not there just to listen, you know, to the, all these guys just put on the exact same show as the records. They're, they're there to experience an actual show and be entertained and that's what these guys are so good at doing is just entertaining a crowd while putting on amazing music at the same time yeah <laughs> yeah yeah for sure and i mean i know you know commonly it's you know depending on who you're on tour with you may or may not get facetime with some of these dudes i mean how has it been on the twins of evil tour We've, we were told from day one that they wouldn't talk to us they wouldn't look at us don't be in the hallways when they're here and then now like I, I, john five probably has watched more palais shows than most people <laughs> and it's like manson's only been super kind and the whole camp has just been incredibly open i think they give you the first week to see if they actually like you musically and if they see if you're the real deal yeah. And then it's they just come around like today. Manson security knocks the door. Is like, where's Remington? And we're like, what? And he's like, Manson wants him. And I'm like, okay. And so he goes in and has a drink with him before the show. And he's like, I just want to hang out with you. You know, it's like, so I just it's, want to take a couple shots before stage, just talk about you know music. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So that, that's, yeah. that's a very cool thing because a lot of people don't get to witness or experience like kind of the quintessential rock star that has been for the past 20, 30 years of being an icon. So it's it's something that we've always looked up to we you know growing up and watching mtv and whatnot and you're just like that's marilyn manson and then when you get on tour with marilyn manson it's kind of unbelievable for him to like kind of befriending you in a way that he doesn't need to so yeah yeah well i mean what do you talk about with marilyn manson like holy shit he always comes off as such an articulate highly intelligent uh you know gentleman right they've been, oh. guys been quoting the office you know uh step brothers yeah yeah it was funny <laughs> um but it's mostly just talking about music and you know his life experiences and it's just you know i'm just learning a lot and yeah I'm just you know really thankful he's kind of like taking me under his wing in a way yeah <laughs> that's amazing that's amazing so uh, I, I mean you know here we are boom boom room side a side b kind of you know slowly gently delicately fading into the past um you know uh what's next as far as uh you know touring and stuff i mean do you guys have headlining dates coming up i think yeah, so yeah right? we're for right now we're doing um i said previously it's like we've done four years we're gonna take the first break we've ever taken from touring so it's gonna be about three months but just preparing for the next cycle we're gonna do japan and australia and reading and leeds after this tour and then from basically beginning of october to january we're we're home finishing up yeah. music music videos 2020 though is, is a lot of crazy is shit europe and everywhere in europe from russia to poland to norway to sweden like we're doing every territory possibly can in uh, january february and march and then april and may we're doing states in canada and then you know the next year is looking like a very very heavy touring but very smart way of touring not just like oh what's opportunities we're going to just make sure we solidify our own identity as a stage show because when you open up you really don't get much to do besides yourself going on that stage and proving that you're a good band and you're entertaining by yourself but now we get to actually build a show and that's a beautiful thing for us yeah. so yeah yeah for sure and uh you know of course uh you know you mentioned mtv i mean you know uh you guys uh you know you're you got a fair amount of music videos i mean you seem to be a band that still believes in that visual presentation remington yeah um as far as the visual goes we dress like this to be just noticed i guess i don't know <laughs> It's our, it's, our, it's our true identity and it just comes through with the music and then i think when you go into the thing of the next chapter emerson's been a huge thing of doing all the artwork and doing the comic books and making sure that people are getting more invested into the band more so than just the music because the music there's so much content yeah, out there in the we, world we try to do a lot more than you know just music like for instance like our bass player curcio he's coming out with his own barbecue sauce line and it's just unbelievable <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> now you gotta do it. I'm just spitballing here. You gotta do it. <laughs> Curcio's barbecue sauce line coming out 2020. <laughs> He's not. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, you, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> mm-hmm. you gotta plug it. Gotta make that sauce, baby. <laughs> well, now, you know, I've, I've, I've traveled around the internet. Although I sound so old <laughs> talking in these terms. But I mean, you you guys have a rabid fan base. Like, holy! I think that, that's the been the best thing is our audience has been the only reason we've been able to survive on the road because it's they it's weird. It's we have such a young audience, but they're so rabid on online and they're they, they'll like today I showed up and it was what we got here at like eleven o'clock and there's like in Saskatoon like six girls sitting out in line. You would think with the, for a Manson show, Manson fans would be here first, but it's like. These girls are sitting there like, we've been waiting for the four months you haven't been here. I'm like, it's only been four months. They're like, no, we've been waiting for this day. You know, it's, it's a really nice thing. And that's like, it makes our life really nice when we get to see them so excited in the audience. And it's not just so passive. Like, they are they have as much of an enjoyable time as we do. So. Yeah, well, I mean, I love I love reading the, the comment section, you know, of your social media because yeah. your fans are so sweet and so mm-hmm. nice, right, Emerson? I mean, like, you they're, know, they're so supportive. The, 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 you know, the, the vest, there was lots of uh, comments on that and the outfits and the There's clothes. A lot of, like, theories and shit. Um, yeah, come join us. He, he's tired, though. It takes a lot out of you to drum, I would imagine. Uh, it's just a life, I guess. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, there's a lot of kids, like, in the comments and, the, like, the theory sections and shit. Like, I've had them solve binary code and Morse code. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like, we, we like to look at it as, it's like just one giant family. Yes. In a way, it's, there's, there's no fans here, it's just, it's family. They're the sweetest kids in the world. I love them all my heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good peeps. Good peeps. Good peeps, for sure. Yeah, well, and I imagine that's a big part of, you know, what keeps you guys going and keeps you guys motivated. But, I mean, you know, apart from the obvious answer that it's the fans, I mean, you that, know. Yeah, it's, it was music first, and that's becoming bigger than us, and the fans are the like, that, you're like, oh, we mean something more to these kids than we thought we would ever, because you do music because you want to play music, and then you realize, oh, wow, the audience becomes incredibly important, and they feel so attached to something, and I think that's the generational thing that you have to kind of now 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 we have to do it because it's they look to us as like you know they look up to us and want the sense of just enjoyment and also feeling a sense of home and i think they built a fan base the fan base has built a family amongst themselves of all being friends with each other and i think that's something that really hasn't happened in a very long time in music and i think that was what happened in the 60s and 70s it was like such a great connective thing between audiences and it felt like a safe place in a home and people to just lose themselves in the moment and like you know life's life's crazy and weird but they find each other through it and that's a really cool thing so yeah. so so i love asking this question but i mean you know getting back to when you guys first started i mean what motivated you guys to you know be rock stars in the first place and even just pick up instruments or you know in your case um, sing- um, I don't know, like, I feel like music's always been in our blood, and, um, the mo- motivation for the past couple of years has been, you know, wanting to eat, so, <laughs> we just fucking play it until we get paid, and then we get afford the food, um, but I don't know, we've, we've played together our entire lives, you know, um, but as far as, like, the inspiration, I just feel like we all have fucking music in our blood, and this is, like, what I was meant to do. Uh, I honestly I've just been being with my brothers has been like the best thing we get to do this life together and to see that we built a family amongst our music and, and grow onto our family has been the coolest thing we, we enjoyed the music that we were creating from day one we were in our basement just jamming and that, then those songs became recorded and put out on the world and then it's actually allowed us to travel the world so I think it's pretty pretty awesome that yeah, songs fun. and ideas that we wrote when we were 20, 18, and 16 of taking crazy this. like songs that you wrote in your fucking basement and then you know you tour them for like a couple of years and you see people sing those lyrics back to you you're like what the fuck is happening <laughs> it's, it's fucking wild you know you never thought you know the song that you were writing just literally in your fucking basement would be known across the world it's, <laughs> it's a fucking insane feeling Right on, man. Well, your your dude, he was a very good dude, has given us the signal here. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no worries, man. Well, thank you very much, thank guys. You. Drew, Drew, say something into the mic. Yeah. Yeah. Drew, you're being. Hi, I do. 
Nothing. <laughs> he does a lot more. There you have it. <laughs>